Yo, what is up everybody? Jumping ya. Today I am back on some Space Marine 2. And I want to talk about the new difficulty lethal and the balance of this game. The tactical. There's actually a lot I want to talk about, so let's go ahead and get started. The gameplay you are watching is a solo that I got using the tactical on this new difficulty. This is Ballistic Engine. I think this is one of the easiest missions in the game. You can actually run past a lot of stuff. I chose to fight it because I really do enjoy it killing enemies that's the main fun I have in this game and the tactical is still ridiculously overpowered if you were worrying about a patch oh are they gonna nerf this tactical class no they did not in fact the tactical is now better than ever in my opinion and is definitely the number one class in the game if we're gonna factor in this new difficulty the tactical is number one by a mile every single one of these missions you're going to get a boss battle and just having a boss battle means that having a tactical is amazing. It's going to debuff the boss and make the boss die so much faster. And if you are playing some of the classes, like let's say the Assault, and you're trying to solo, and you get a boss, it can be kind of a disaster at times. Compared to having the tactical just completely delete the boss and really make it a non-factor. That being the case... I want to talk about this new difficulty. Like I said, the mob density is amazing. There are actually a couple crazy new gimmicks and modifiers that I personally am not a big fan of. The first one I guess I'll talk about is the ability for the enemies to become unstaggerable. Now the way that you can counter that is if you can get a gun strike on them, it can knock it off of them. From what I've experienced, it seems like this happens whenever they call in reinforcements or if you kill too many majors next to each other there's definitely something about if a major dies next to another major it can buff the other majors now the big problem with this is the melee classes i can actually see this being a huge issue i can tell you right now that from my experience just from playing the tactical trying to melee enemies if a major who has a sniper rifle becomes unstoppable and you can no longer stagger him and you're trying to melee him and that's all you got you could be in a lot of trouble because he will just keep shooting that sniper at you and you have to just keep dodging and waiting for the right opportunity to actually get some damage in. Where before you can just get in there and stun him and as long as you can stun him you can destroy that enemy. That is no longer going to be the case on this difficulty so that right there is a kind of dumb gimmick in my opinion. I'm not a big fan of that and I can also see that affecting other classes. For example the heavy is one of the best classes in the game. And anyone using a Melta Rifle is pretty strong. Well, the ability for the enemies to become unstaggerable means that all of the Melta Rifle users are going to suffer from that. Big time. Because they do rely on the ability when there's multiple Majors in front of them to keep them all stunned while they deal with each one. So now you will actually have to factor in that, hey, some of these guys are unstoppable and they're just going to actually destroy me if they get close to me. I can't stagger them at all. It's a problem. That gimmick is not great. I don't mind it maybe if they call in reinforcements. If they successfully call in reinforcements, maybe they can have a gimmick like that. It's fine. But one thing I've also noticed sometimes is that when they're trying to call in reinforcements and I stop them, the enemy that was trying to call in reinforcements becomes unstoppable. Now that's kind of unfair to me. I should be able to stop him from being able to become like that by stopping the reinforcements. Also, another problem I've noticed and I can see this being a really big issue in multiplayer, is that if there's multiple majors next to each other, and you put multiple of them into the execution mode, if you don't actually kill them all while they're in that mode, and you start executing them, they will just come back to life, and they will become unstoppable, because they're dying next to each other. That is actually a problem, because one thing I've noticed a lot in multiplayer, is people just don't go for execution sometimes, and I'm surprised by it. There's times where I don't need the execution, so I'll put the guy into execution state, and then there's an ally next to me, and I just won't touch him. And then I look back, and the guy never executed him either, so he came back to life. That could be a huge problem now. If people are not going for executions, you need to get multiple executions at once. You need to kill the enemies at the same time, really, if possible, to make it so that they're not going to become buffed and unstaggerable. It's a pretty major problem, to be honest, and I can see it just being frustrating and people having a huge issue with it. 
Now, another thing that's new with this difficulty is whenever extremes will spawn, you will get three extremes at once. They have limit the stupid flying guys. You can get two stupid flying guys, maybe, but man, there are times where you will get three invisible dudes or three ravengers, whatever it might be. It's terrible. And sometimes when it happens, you're just in a horrible position and you are going to die. If three lictors attack you all at once, and by the way, they have a mix-up where sometimes you need to parry and sometimes you need to dodge. The reality is, if there's multiple lictors on you now, you need to dodge. Do not try to parry because they're going to be doing mix-ups on you and you're going to get caught. And if you get hit by two of them or three of them at once, you're going to get wrecked instantly. It has happened to me now multiple times, and that spawn does happen. I don't really see the point of that. It would be way better if they would just spawn one of each, maybe? That's fair. The reason why they probably don't want to do that, and they want to have some RNG in there, is because people really, really hate the stupid flying guys. If you have multiple of them at any point, it's really bad. Or if you constantly see them, people hate that too. I'll be honest, I'd rather have them all the time than have three Ravengers attacking me all at once and doing things that are just impossible to really react to because there's three different attacks coming at me and they're all different. But overall though, I do enjoy the fact that so many extremes spawn and so many enemies spawn because it does actually make you feel challenged and you will start to get your adrenaline pumping when you have multiple extremes multiple majors and a million little guys oh boy your blood just gets pumping and it's great stuff so i do like it for those reasons it's just sometimes it can be completely unbalanced in fact in this gameplay you will see at some point a spawn of three lictors so these are the invisible guys they're very annoying they constantly run away from you and go invis and they will surprise attack you it can be a disaster now, I got lucky, to be honest, in my case, when I had the triple spawn of them. There's been other times where I'm not so lucky, trust me. So, let's go ahead and now talk about something a little bit different, which is another major problem with this difficulty that I can see, and that is the new armor gimmick. Again, these gimmicks, these modifiers, they are unneeded, in my opinion. All you ever have to do is just make the enemies harder, or just increase the number of enemies. That's really all you gotta do. Modifiers and gimmicks are just going to make people frustrated. The armor thing, it's not the biggest deal. As long as you actually get your parries on the minor enemies, that still gives you armor and you don't have to be next to your teammates for that to trigger. Same thing with any of the armor that you can get from perks. There are multiple perks that can give you your armor back. All those will work fine. But when you go for melee finishers, the normal way that you're taught to play the game to get your armor back is to get melee finishers, or just finishers in general, on enemies. And if you do that, you'll get armor. Now, you will not get armor unless you are next to your teammates. You actually have to all be next to each other, which is kind of crazy because I thought originally, okay, this wouldn't be so bad as long as two people are close to each other, then they can get that benefit. But no, all three of the players actually have to be close to each other. Now, if you're doing a solo and you have bots, this is also a problem. You will experience this with the bots all the time. They are out of range. They can't keep up. This also will factor in to balance. Big time, in my opinion. When I did my ranking, I ranked the assault number six and I ranked the sniper number five. A lot of people disagree with me on the sniper, but I just think the sniper has a lot of problems. And this is also going to be a new problem. Because now, if you're trying to snipe, the name of your class is Sniper, you might be out of range of your melee allies. They are rushing in to get melee range, and you are sniping. You are out of range. It's a huge problem. I do understand what they're going for here. They want the group to stay together. They want them to work together. I like that. But this is a kind of wonky gimmick. I just talked about the Sniper having problems. What about the Assault? Now, the Assault might jetpack in to the group of little guys. Same thing with the Vanguard. He might just go ahead and grapple out of range of all of the armor that he could get. This is a really dumb gimmick, just because you have those factors there. They could address this by just increasing the range of that by a lot. 
I think that the range, if it was increased, it could be okay. As long as you are in the same general area of your allies, I'm cool with this. That way people won't just go running off ahead. Which is something that does happen a lot. I like that, but you have to be fighting the same group of enemies at all times, even though there might be enemies on the left, enemies on the right, enemies in front of you. You have to just say, nah, I gotta fight the enemies in front of me, because that's the one we're fighting. Can't go wandering off to the left to deal with that guy, because if I go over there, I'm getting out of range, and it's gonna hurt not just me, it's gonna hurt everybody, because we all three have to be together. I think if they want this mechanic in here, increase the range of it, and also change it so that you really only have to be next to an ally, one ally. So if somebody does wander off to the left to deal with the sniper or whatever enemy that is over there, they cannot get armor if they get a melee finisher. But the two guys who are fighting the horde, they should be able to continuously get armor because they are close together. Now the final thing I guess I'll mention is that they took away your indicator for enemies. There's no like compass no more. Now that's a big bummer because you will no longer know when a wave is coming. If you pay attention to that, you can always tell like, oh, I'm about to get a wave. Let me get my move on here because I'm trying to avoid it. But I do like this change for this difficulty. I think for a challenge sake, this is okay. And it does add to the excitement because you don't actually know when you're going to get a wave. You do have to rely more on sound now. So you really want to listen because you can hear that wave indicator. You can hear the extreme indicator and that gives you a warning. But if you do miss those sound cues, you might be caught off guard by extremes or even a wave. Keep that in mind. The tactical is still amazing. And for this difficulty, he is the number one class without question. The scanner is still good. Don't worry about anything that you've heard about it. It still wrecks everything. And the tactical grenade launcher build is the best in the game. I'm going to shut up now. So I would appreciate it if you could like this video for me. Be sure to subscribe for future videos. And I really do hope that everyone has a very nice day. And peace So. Ammunition cache here. These storms will strip my colors right down to the ceramite. And now a train terminal transcends to become the barrel of a vault. Obstruction detected. Removal is required to commence. Message received. We are back on the move!
fertilizer now, Cenos. to scan. Close and sharp. Warhead is loaded, Lieutenant. Always do. Talasa, I have multiple swarms moving to your location. You have their attention. Deal with them swiftly. We will not get another shot at this. Brothers, it occurs to me the Xenos are unaware they must catch a train. Keep the truth. 
Munitions.
We coordinate precisely. We can fix the charging station and defend the train Detonation in five. Brace for shockwave. No mercy for any that would desecrate the Emperor's domain. No see those bioscans. Mission successful to us. Return to the battle march. <laughs> 